In Luke 18, we read about a rich young ruler who approached Jesus and he asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And before Jesus answered his question, Jesus asked him a question and he said, Why do you call me good? There's none good but God. Jesus is not denying that he's God. Jesus is asking this rich young ruler, Do you know who you're talking to? Because depending on how you approach Jesus, whether you understand that he is God or whether you just think he's a good teacher, how you see Jesus is going to affect how you respond to Jesus. If he's God, then you need to take every word that he says at face value. You need to obey him. If he's just a good teacher, then you can take his advice or leave it. And that's why Jesus confronts this rich young ruler. Do you think I'm just a good teacher, just giving some good advice? Or do you understand that my words have the authority of God Almighty? Do you understand that you're talking to God when you talk to Jesus? Jesus goes on to refer this rich young ruler to the commandments. And he names five of the Ten Commandments, the five commandments that deal with our relationships with other people. And this young ruler says, all these things I have kept from my youth. Now this wouldn't be uncommon for a pious Jew in the first century to claim to have kept the law from his youth. Uh, Paul, for example, says that he was blameless in the law prior to his own conversion. And so this is speaking of outward observance. And yet Jesus goes farther than that. Remember in Matthew 5, Jesus says, if you lust in your heart, you've committed adultery. If you hate someone in your heart, you've committed murder. And so it's not just an outward technical observance of the law that Jesus is seeking. God is seeking truth in the inward parts. After the rich young ruler answered Jesus, Jesus said, you still lack one thing. Go and sell all that you have, give it to the poor, and then come follow me. You will have treasure in heaven. But the man couldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. He was unwilling to do that, and he left very sad. And Jesus said how difficult it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Why did Jesus tell him to do this? Is this a religious work that would qualify him, entrance into heaven? No. What Jesus is saying is, come follow me. That eternal life is found in relationship with Jesus. But this man had an idol in his life. His riches were the stumbling block that were preventing him from true authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. What about each of us? What are the things that hinder us from relationship to Jesus? Whatever it is, Jesus is going to put his finger on it and he's going to say, you're going to have to get rid of this. Notice that for the rich young ruler, he wasn't telling him to go burn his money or destroy his riches, throw it in the trash. He was telling him to do something compassionate to others. Remember, this man had claimed to keep the law from his youth and yet he is not willing to bless the poor who are his neighbors. And this is really the fulfillment of the law. Jesus said that the greatest commandment is to love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second commandment is like the first commandment. And that is to love your neighbor as yourself. By Jesus instructing this man to give away his possessions to the poor, he was instructing him essentially to love his neighbor as himself. This the man was unwilling to do.